Well, welcome back to another video guys. If you do enjoy the videos, do make sure to give them a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, hit the bell icon and the subscribe button. You'll be kept up to date when I upload new videos. It's always a pleasure making the videos for you chaps. I am back out tench fishing, nice to come back out. But after that enjoyable but emotional last trip, um, my father's back in hospital. His blood sugar levels are through the roof. We've been trying to control them, but they've been terrible to get under any control and they were like that prior to him coming back from the care home and his dementia has gone downhill in massive chunks over the last 72 hours um, really really distressing really distressing anyway I won't say too much more about that because a father has got his own dignity to keep as well anyway back on to more pleasant thoughts at least for the time being back out tent fishing show you the setup I'm using because I didn't really show it that well on the previous video so the reel which I call an interceptor which is my bad I always get mixed up with interceptors and avengers the reel is a very tiny Akuma Avenger that's an 800 size it's a very small reel to, for a bait runner beautiful little reels uh, pick that up on the fish deal website for around about 30 pounds or thereabouts 30 35 pounds that's loaded with Horizon sinking line which is Matrix. The rod is a Shimano STC, that stands for Shimano Travel Concept. It's a 2.7 meter rod. Its casting weight is 10 to 30 grams. Now typically they are classified as a spinning rod but I think Shimano had a little bit of common sense come to light with their latest um, revisions of this rod. Uh, where they actually state you know they're good for sticking in the car if you can do a bit of float fishing or some light carp fishing, tench fishing, etc. And they really are an all-round rod. Trust me guys, I never say anything's any good on this channel unless it is. I've owned two of these and they've been absolutely superb. I've had them for around about 16 to 17 years. They've landed me river carp to over 20 pounds, double figure barbel, big bream, big tench. Can't say fairer, fairer than that, can I? And they're just a very good, although they are classified as a spinning rod, they're a good all-round light travel rod and they break down very, very small. Um, I think the newer models don't have this. This is the older model. This is, as I say, quite a lot older. But on this model, you can literally, like a snooker cue, unscrew and then collapse the rod. They are, as I say, telescopic. And they compact down this 2.7 meter one goes down to 40 centimeters comes in a nice little tube to keep it protected and it also the tube's shaped to take a reel as well a small reel very very nice rods and um, as I say very compact you want to stick stick it in your in your like overhead area in your car or in your back seat so you've got a spare rod for opportunistic fishing or you like me you travel light so go on to the rig because I didn't show it that well last time Simple Drennan low resistance quick change rum ring, HOS tackle buffer bead running down from there, nice little anti tangle tubing. The line is Preston Innovations power line in £7.10 braking strain. So, down, down from there, how well you'll be able to see that. Got a little size 8 hook which is a wide gate pattern once again HOS tackle 10 pence a hook and they are as strong as any talent tips I've ever used I'll put some links in the video description box for the tackle I'm using and there at the bottom is a small size mag clip or maggot clip and that's what I'm going to start off with this evening I'm going to fish into darkness into early morning but I'm not going to start on maggots um, although I may use one or two on the clip I'm going to be using red worms on the maggot clip give a kind of medusa effect and give that kind of look of blood worm that might be you'd get on the root on the um, lake bed so that's the main plan but I've also got with me in case I change over to a standard hair rig I've got these which are the main line match wafters in eight millimeter pineapple flavor really decent that's if so if I do find that there's a lot of eels about there is eels in this lake if there's a lot of silvers feeding and the worms are getting hammered then I'll switch to those bait wise ground baiting with following and that is the mainline proactive that's mixed with molasses corn a little bit of hemp a little bit of maggots nice rich treacly flavor real syrupy and sweet it's a really good 
ground bait, the proactive. The mozzies are trying to kill me and off of me. They're not having my blood. <laughs> anyway, it's a nice cereal ground bait, the mainline proactive. Mixes well, so you can get either a loose effect or slightly damped effect, or you can really ball it up for range fishing. That's what I'm going to be doing ground bait wise, some balls of that throughout the night. I'm going to put some balls in now. I've got some sweet corn with me and I've got some tutti frutti boilies in case I want to switch to those as well, which they do like in this particular lake. Yeah, it's a lovely evening. But one thing I will say, the lake's got that fluff on it. You know, that bunny rabbit fluff is what I call it. It looks like bunny towel fluff, which is a nightmare. You know what it's like, guys. You get it in the eyes of your rod when you're playing a good fish and it can make or break whether you're going to land that fish or whether it's going to get stuck in the eyes of the rod. I mean the bunny rabbit fluff and the line, not the fish obviously. That would look a bit odd, wouldn't it? But yeah, it can make it a little bit tricky. So I'm going to put some balls of ground bait in now and um, try and disperse the fluff a bit before I cast out. I'm hopeful. It's a nice evening. Tell you what, considering how absolutely cruddy spring's been, this is probably one of the better evenings that I've had. I can certainly tell that it's milder because the mosquitoes are everywhere. And there's a lot of rud movement. I wouldn't mind one of the lake's rud. There's some big rud in this lake. Go well over three pounds if you can get amongst them. But I am here primarily for the tinkers. So that's it. Bait wise, maggots, red worms, corn, wafter boilies and tutti frilly boilies. Let's um, see if there's a tinker tailor, soldier, sailor <laughs> willing to feed. I certainly hope so. I know that. There we go, all done. Three red worms on a maggot clip. Little mesh bag there to give a nice bit of a tract and, and also if it does hit in between some weed it allows it to present itself a little bit better. Nice simple rig and um, not a worm kebab in sight. <laughs> Well, daylight's really faded now. Lake is like a sheet of glass with a load of fluffy pollen on it. The odd fish rolling, the odd tension, odd rod, but quiet at the moment. Lovely, lovely evening though. Beautiful evening.
First blood. Beautiful. Oh, there we go. That's one very, very angry male tinker, I can tell you. That absolutely steamed off. Single tone run. Delkin really did warble into life. A little bit of a tatty dorsal, but apart from that, it's in beautiful condition. Lovely, immaculate buttercup colours and limey greens and olives. Beautiful looking fish. Lovely condition. Just taken on, on the mag maggot clip with three red worms on the maggot clip and a loose feed of ground bait, that nice molasses and mainline mixture. Very nice and some loose fed corn as well. Beautiful paddle to it. Happy days. Junk on the line's not not too good, I tell you. Never too good. Just trying to trying to get the line pinned down. Oh, that was a bit close. Went for the landing there and Tench tried to take me under the marginal snow. Tinker number two, just as I was making a nice, cheeky, extra strong builder style cup of tea. Whew, look at that, what a corker. What an absolute whew, lumpy dump lump. What a fish. Whew, she's fit to burst. Absolutely fit to burst. I notice a lot of these have got dorsal damage. I don't know if that's due to spawning or just standard kind of thing because they're, you know, old fish, some of them. But look at that. She is an absolute tank. Real big gut on her. Pull myself back. There you go, guys. What an absolute pearl. They're such graceful creatures, aren't they? Absolutely beautiful.
car made me wait, I'll tell you. It's been quiet. I was just watching, just watching that line tighten and lift. Sat there having another early morning cup of tea, watching the mist rise on the lake. Gorgeous morning. Just watching the line go back and forth across where the eyes are, because I slacked off quite a bit. Just to get the line down a bit more tidy on the bottom. I thought I'd just see it getting a little bit more confident. I wouldn't wait for it to, to fully hit the swinger to the top of the rod and just hit that as the line was tightening on the swinger. Yeah, lovely, beautiful days. Really enjoyable trip. Well, how about that for a rotund tinker? Real nice mal. Look at those real recognisable black tar kind of paw prints. I think we can call this the um, beauty spot tinker. <laughs> Lovely condition. Tentative bite, so I decided to hit that early. Yeah, really, really nice. Very, very happy with this indeed. It's been an enjoyable trip. And with fish as beautiful as this, who wouldn't be happy? Anyway, paintbrush paddles, paw print flanks, beauty spots are plenty. Let's get this orange-eyed teddy bear slip back, shall we? Wonderful. Well, that's me all done and dusted. I had one other take, um, lifted the swinger up. I was going to strike it. I hesitated, it dropped back down, it went back up again. And the fish, like Tench can do at times, ditched the bait in the weed. So, the way it goes. It's been very enjoyable though. A couple of nice fish during the evening and night. I should say during the night. And, um, yeah, that lovely kind of Dalmatian spotted male this morning. So, could have had four, but had three. But I'll tell you what, it's enjoyable. It's the kind of fishing I like doing, as you know, guys. Travelling light, being opportunistic, not taking too much gear if I can, and just locating fish and fishing for them. Now, I've got to be honest with you guys, the swim that I'm fishing commands a lot of water. And... Um, do want to come down and give it another go so it's a good spot a real good spot you've got gravel bar a small gravel bar to your left you've got a bigger gravel bar to your right and you've got weed beds and you know any tench angler will tell you or any angler in general you know tench love that kind of feature and it's a nice marginal shelf as well uh, but i do want to try another swim there's a swim that's got a nice drop off it's deeper in the margins um by about an extra foot which is quite a lot and it's got a nice Nice gravel gully there. Got nice marginal snags either side as well. But you know, I do want to continue fishing this swim for a few more trips, I reckon. But we'll see. Play it by ear. I do want to get back down though. Um, yeah, it's been enjoyable. Really, really. As I said earlier, it's um, food for your heart and your mind. Good soul food. Angling. Being out with nature. You just can't can't beat it. I mean, this morning I could hear... I was, hearing lots of cuckoos always makes me laugh I sit there thinking they're calling out come adopt my children they're murderers <laughs> um, yeah beautiful beautiful you know wildlife is just so so amazing it's just to be sat there and just you know you're not making too much disturbance you're setting a little bit of steel into the ground with your bank sticks and then you're just melting into the backdrop of your surroundings and it's just Absolutely wonderful. Anyway, I'm waffling, aren't I? Hope you've enjoyed the video. And I'll see you on the flip side on another Fishing for Memories video. Do take care, guys. And do stay healthy, keeping an eye out for your loved ones. Till next time, goodbye.